How's that for a studio? <laughs> Look at that, I can move my arms and everything. Right, now today I want to talk to you about German Imperial or Prussian spiked helmets. Now, I'm fairly certain you'll have seen the thing I'm going to talk to you about. It looks like this. See, I've got a replica one here. It's not an antique. If it was, I wouldn't be doing this with it. You might be saying, wow, why don't you just say pickle halber? Come on, that's a pickle halber. Why not just say pickle halber? Because I believe pickle halber to be an anachronym, which is a word that was not used at the time. Uh, as I'm reliably informed by the source for this video's information, facts about Fritz, which is this book here, which I bought at the York Army Museum, just next to Clifford's Tower. Video on that, perhaps, coming in the future. Uh, these were not called pickle halber by the German soldiers wearing them in the trenches of the, of the First World War. These were called the Helm der Spitze, helmet with spike, or Liederhelm, leather helm, which is, of course, because they're made of boiled leather. As you can hear, that's not the sound steel makes. And if it was steel, I would have hurt myself quite a bit there. No, this is made of boiled leather. And that means possibly one of the points, because this is some points about, is that this is not going to stop bullets. No matter what you do, a bullet hits this, it's going to go straight through and hit you in the skull and you are going to die. Uh, or be seriously wounded. But, uh, you know, either way, it's not going to be good for you. Now... These were introduced into the Prussian army by King Frederick William IV in 1842, as he was modernising his army, making it fit for modern warfare in the Napoleonic age, you know, to fight back dastardly bony. And that is why it has this spike. Now, you might say, oh, that spike, that's purely decorative. I mean, what purpose could that possibly have? Are you going to headbutt the enemy? I don't think so. Well, in fact, this spike, as I'm reliably informed by the book, is to deflect sabre blows, because if you imagine, if a sabre hits you here, even if it is made of steel, it's going to hurt you, because you, OW! I wouldn't want to be hit by a sabre in a plain steel helmet, but this spike you can see, it would channel a sabre blow to a glancing blow, which would not in fact transfer quite as much brunt force onto the helmet, so that's going to make it a bit more comfortable to wear if you're being hit by French cavalrymen. Yes, so that's why they've got a spike. And uh, it's, yes, so it's not decorative. And these were still worn by German soldiers in the First World War, 75 years later, thereabouts. Um, yes, so 1914, First World War begins, and the German soldiers in the trenches are still wearing these, except with one key adaption. They have a cloth cover over the top called a Helmbezug, which the spelling of will be put here. Helmbezug, and that would have the regimental number on the front, and it would stop these lovely brass fittings from gleaming and making you any sniper's best mate. Bang. Done. Because, of course, it is only boiled leather. That's the end of you. S yes, and unfortunately for the Germans, the British were blockading them. The British and the rest of the Allies were blockading them, so German shipping was not great, so they couldn't really get their hands on the boiled leather necessary to make these helmets. So there became several different ersatz helmets. Ersatz, of course, being the German word for fake, not real. In World War II, there were such things as ersatz coffee and ersatz meat made of potatoes. Uh, because, of course, shortages once more. And so ersatz helmets made of things like cork, paper mache, and what was the other one? Tin. Tin, that's it. So they're, they're not made of boiled leather as they're traditionally meant to. In 1915, the Model 15 Pickelhauber, except that's not what they're called, the Model 15 Lieberhelm, it comes out with steel fittings on the front. You see, this is brass. The fittings were steel and painted grey to be less reflective, and the spike, very importantly, was removable. Uh, I read a rather humorous account in this book about a man called Ernst Weckerling. Was it? Yes, it was Ernst Weckerling, who was an Unteroffizier in Fusilier Regiment No. 80. And he recounts that his troops were ordered to march past the Kaiser in full uniform. But of course, as they'd been fighting in the trenches for a while, that proved somewhat difficult because their uniforms were all battered. So there was a great palaver, new buttons being sewn on and, you know, them being washed and all that. Some people even got new uniforms. But in combat, as the points on the helmet, the spikes, I assume would be quite a nuisance. What they'd done is they put them in a great big sack, <laughs> which had gone missing. So... Ah, Shiza, what are we going to do? We've not got any spikes. So what they did was they carved some out of potatoes. And, of course, under the helm bazug, the cloth bag, you wouldn't be able to tell. And, in fact, it even fooled Kaiser Bill, who congratulated them, said, very well, very well done. Except, of course, he said it in German. 
And uh, so there you go. S uh, spikes made of potato on these helmets. And uh, speaking of detachable spikes, despite the fact this has brass fittings, I, I get the sense that this is not an entirely uh, accurate reproduction because on the inside here, there is some modern lace with plastic aglets you can't see but uh yes there you go plastic aglets on the lace which is very definitely modern the badge i don't believe is authentic it's coming off you can see it needs gluing down really i might do that at some point and the the spike can be removed which is not really how it was i suspect i suspect that's for legal purposes because if i was to wear this outside in britain today like that then i could be uh arrested but for carrying an offensive weapon Anyway, so the model uh, 15 with detachable spike and steel fittings. Now, in 1916 in the German army, they were phased out in favour of the much more widely known, I assume much more widely known actually, it could be a tie, uh, Stahlhelm, which was of course used until 1945 by the German Empire and the next biggest regime, I don't really count the Weimar as a regime, it was an interlude, uh, of course run by the Nazi party and Adolf Hitler. His troops were wearing Stahlhelms. And, uh, yes, that was it. Right, the helmet itself. So you can see here on the side, this roundel here, red, white, black, that is the German national, German imperial roundel. But on the other side here, there is black, white, black. Now, why doesn't it match, you might say? Surely they'd want it to be lovely and symmetrical. Well, the thing is that is some local symbology. Oh, yes, local symbology for local people. And there you see them. So in this book, Uniforms of World War One, very good book, you see lots of different roundel designs and those would go on the side of the helmet. And that is essentially, oh, also, in here you can see a chap wearing a helm bazug. So you see how that would work. So there you go, illustrations. Uh, but yes, so the roundels, and that is to symbolise the different constituent bits of the German Empire, because it was an empire. And also the badges on the front varied widely. You'd have some from Saxony, Bavaria, Baden and Wittenberg are the four examples included in Facts About Fritz. Uh, so different ones on the front. So they're, they're a high, highly variable kind of helmet. And uh, although not used by Germany today, they are in fact still in use in several modern militaries uh, for parade dress, including the modern nation states of Sweden and Chile, and I believe also possibly Bolivia. In fact, even here, in dear old Blighty, there are several regiments of Her Majesty's, or <laughs> His Majesty's now, gosh, uh, yes, rest in peace, dear old Liz. There are several regiments who wear a sort of tall um, policeman's type looking kind of helmet with a spike on top. I'll try and have a photo put here of one of them. So yes, the spiked helmet is in fact nothing old and nothing new. So there you go, that's a video on German Imperial or Prussian spiked helmets. I hope you enjoyed. Do consider watching some more videos and I do intend to make more videos in the future, so stay tuned. Uh...